commissioner. Elected much of the amusement of the people of Texas to a fellow attorney down there. Uh, and uh, nothing makes an act commissioner happier than seeing people shouting food in their face. <laughs> it's a really a privilege uh, to be here with some of all of you, Jimmy Mitchell, and the great work that uh, she has done and her volunteers to pull this uh, great group together. Uh, Mike Pence, our uh, state uh, party chair, he's uglier than a mud rail, as you can see. But, uh, <laughs> Well, hammered yourself. 
got ourselves a Democrat, a progressive-minded Democrat, and an African-American progressive-minded Democrat. So we deserve to wallow in the progress, but we do not deserve to get stuck in that wallow. Yes, some change has already come our way. Yeah. You know, they say that the worst job in the circus is cleaning up after the elephants. <laughs> I want to explain that to some of the stories. <laughs> well, we're already doing some of that. We've got Ilda Solis as our Labor Secretary. Yeah. We've got EPA back on the job. We've got the Lily Ledbetter. Job. We got Guantanamo being cleaned up. We got progress on its way. Also, we have a very profound change that has happened, and that is the debate has shifted. It has shifted from their terms to our terms. We're now putting it on the table, and they got to react. Uh, and the However, we cannot get all goosey about Obama's election. Our grassroots agitation and organizational aggressiveness is more essential now than ever before. We can't just crank back the lazy boy saying, oh well, Obama will take care of it now. Just 12 ounce elbow bends, you know, and leave it to Obama. Let's be honest, Obama is going to be only as good as we make him be. I tear a lowdown, you've got copies of it there. I'm sorry, Mark, but you can see it. This one's about uh, the uh, Employee Free Choice Act. Uh, it's going to take some push. We're not going to get that done because Obama's going to do it. We're not going to get it done because Washington is going to do it. We're only going to get it done if we do the pushing out here in the countryside. And i got to tell you, honestly, I. I watched that inaugural thrill on January 20th of the, the crowd pushing all the way back to the Washington Monument, back to the Lincoln Memorial and on, to the size of two million people, maybe more. There. But I had mixed emotions as I watched Obama take the oath of office that day. You know, they say mixed emotions is when you see your 16-year-old daughter coming home from the prom with a Gideon Bible under her arm. <laughs>
And they jumped on that tail out like a gator on a poodle. <laughs> All over it. Giving a whole new meaning to the term piggy bank. <laughs> Second of all, in another force that's out there, Obama is faced with that cynical gaggle of rapidly reactionary Rush Limbaugh Republicans who are determined to make him fail. That's their program. Make Obama fail. When Obama put forth his economic recovery plan, they squawked like a rooster choking on a peach pit, saying it was too costly, too much waste, they screamed. Socialism, they like. But America does have a lot of socialism. We've got firefighters and police officers. We've got school teachers. We've got Social Security.
Franklin Roosevelt got elected. Roosevelt in 1932 did not get elected. On the New Deal, there was no New Deal. He didn't create the New Deal. He got elected because he was the alternative to continued Hooperism. He was the change candidate of that period. So people put him in office, but he did not create the New Deal. Instead, it was grassroots people who did that. We had folks uh, like labor unions, the UAW sit-down strike. We had the efforts uh, by farmers, the penny auctions, and a penny auction meant that when the banker came to auction off a farmer's property, the farm family had to stand there and watch their farm being sold. Every day farmers would come around and gather around. And one farmer would step forward, offer a penny for that farm, and dare anybody to offer two pennies. And nobody offered two pennies. People stood up for themselves, and the bankers had to back up. That's the kind of change that I'm talking about that comes from the countryside. Sidney Hillman come in to see him, the head of the Amalgamated Clothing Department at the time, come in and sit with him and say, Mr. President, we got to do something now. You're an open, we got to do something about the poverty that's ripping across our land. And Roosevelt said, I agree with you. I want to do it. Now make me do it. And that's where we are today. We can't sit around. I think Obama wants to do it, but we're going to have to make him do it. taking charge. Ultimately, democracy always comes down to you and to me. That's it. That's all there is. There's no other secret to it. Nobody else is going to do it for us. Mostly they're the ones doing it to us. We can have the kind of life, we can have the kind of economy, we can have the kind of a country we want if we dare to stand up. Now, I, I was at a political event up in Vermont four years ago and a guy came up wearing the best political button I have ever seen. He said, wearing a button is not enough. <laughs> we can't be a nation of button wearers. We're going to be bolder than that. We're going to stand up in the countryside. And again, that's why Pierce County Democrats, that's why these labor organizations and other community and civic organizations that are gathered here tonight are so crucial to the call. You're the difference. Not anybody you would like to. They can make the difference. I know you've been disappointed by some of the people you put the state legislature, the state senate here recently. Well, guess what? You're going to be disappointed with us until you squeeze them. I encourage you all of your great organizations to something. Lewis Bizarre, the late great Southern humorist, once explained something that we in the South have always known to be true, and that is there's a great big difference between being naked and being naked. <laughs> Being naked means you got no clothes on. Being naked means you got no clothes on and you are up to something. We're going to be up to something. That's our All I'm here to do is to say keep on, keep it on, keep pressing. We don't win the first time now. We don't win the second, third, sometimes the fourth, fifth time now. But we got to keep pushing. My friend Willie Nelson put it to me like this one time. He said, I tell the early bird might get the worm, but it's the second mouse that gets the cheese. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave you with this thought. This is it's from my old Aunt Eula. Blessed lady, lived to 90 years of age. And Eula was a farmer up in northeast Texas, a couple of counties away from where I grew up. And Eula, something big happened on Eula and her husband Ernest's farm uh, when I was but a boy. And it was that the rural electric administration, the New Deal, brought electricity, brought power wires into that county, county county. And what that meant was something very practical to Eula. It meant she could put an electric pump in the creek and move water into her house. The 
first time ever, she had water in her house. And one day I was there, again, but a boy. And there was a big fuss. The men were standing over the faucet in the kitchen because the water was coming out all murky. And they didn't know what was wrong. They were scratching their butts saying, well, I don't know. What do you think that? And my Aunt Eula turned to me and she said, Jim, the water won't ever clear up until we get the hogs out of the creek. <laughs> Right there is our problem, isn't it? <laughs> the hogs are in the creek. <laughs> and you don't get them out of the creek. By saying, here hog, here hog. Here <laughs> please. You've got to put your shoulders to them and shove them out of the creek. That's what the Pierce County Democrats represent. Yeah,